Hey Sedge, can you show me how to connect the wheels? <laughs> of course. There's a variety of ways of doing it. I've seen a bunch of videos, great ways to join them. There's a lot to it, and there really isn't. I got a wicked simple way of doing it. This is the way I was taught many, many years ago. Um, the one thing you have in your hand is the rail connector, the FS rail connector. It, you'll notice on there, and let's get in here, cameraman. Look right here. You notice there's slotted screws? I used to hear this all the time. I replace mine with hex nuts. That's not what you do. You need the slotted screw because you ever, when you're using a slotted screwdriver, what happens if you put too much torque on there? Pops it, out. It strips, it kind of wallows out. Well, that's good, and that's why we've put these in here. Okay, <clears throat> it's because if you put too much torque, okay, you'll dimple the rail, and that's what you don't want. Okay, right. so we're gonna leave your screws in there. Okay, because I got a I got a little screw. Okay, <laughs> you see how there's two ribs? You have your outside rib. Yep. And your inside rib. This is where your tracks are rides. Yep. Okay, <clears throat> you need two. Okay, so make sure you get two. And the reason, and as I put this together, and I always do this, I take it and I put, tighten two screws here. I'll flip this over so you can see it. I tighten two screws there. Okay, but you see how I offset it? It's kind of like when we were setting up with the parallel edge guide. I always offset things because it makes it getting in there a little bit easier. Okay, so I'll show you some of the common mistakes people make when they set up their rail like this. Okay. Okay, they butt these together. That's oh. not good. What you want to do is you want to put just a little bit of space. Now, I used to take a straight edge, okay? A good straight edge, okay? And in the beginning, many moons ago, probably about 17 years ago, I used to put it on the back here. I thought that was the way you did it. No, no. What you want to do is if you do have a good straight edge, you want to put it on this rib here. And I've seen some great, oh. and, and, and everybody's starting to learn now, that's where your accuracy is right here. Sure. But the one thing you don't want to do, and I'll explain why, is butt them together, because this isn't guaranteed to be cut at 90. Okay? So if you butt them together, they could cant a little. Okay. Okay, so remember when we set up the track saw uh, not too long ago, and I showed you these cams right here. See them? Yep. The only thing you need, you don't need a straight edge. Okay? You need these cams because now I'm going to bring these tracks in perfect alignment because I'm going to take the cam and cameraman, come over here and see this. And I'm going to open this up so everybody can see this. Okay? I'm going to take these cams. See my, that's the center line of the sole of my saw. Yep. I'm going to tighten it up right there, just like that. So now there's no movement. That brought it into alignment. That rib is now aligned with this rib. Awesome. See? I, I and, see it's where you're going. and it's pretty simple. You just tight, take the screws, you tighten them up. Oh, I gotta put a little earl on that. Okay, don't over torque it. And take that, and we can slide this over and tighten them from underneath. Nice. That's all it is. Now it's in perfect alignment. Now, in saying that, what you don't want to do is now that you have that gap in there, you don't want to pick it up on this end, especially if you have the parallel guys. You rotate it and move it around and support it in the center. In the center. But okay. tightening those two screws underneath, you're good to go. Awesome. We talked about it for the track saw. We have that space. How do I make sure the accuracy of our holes here? For okay, so you, what you're asking is, and this is the question, I got you on this okay. one. Good one. Uh, you need that hole. See how these are spaced at 32 millimeters apart? You want that hole spaced to that hole at 32 millimeters. Yeah. Now we're talking, so it's pretty simple. Um, these are called the end stops, all right? And you know the way I showed you, 16 up and out or mm -hmm. 32 up and out. Yep. Okay, we're gonna get ready to do some uh, uh, shake a flat panel doors using a domino, and <clears throat> we're gonna bore those cup hinges, because we did it for the hinge plates on the cabinet, we gotta bore the cup hinges, so we need to space it right in between that first uh, hinge plate hole. Okay. So that's why we use 32. I'll explain that when we do the shake of flat panel doors coming up pretty quick here. All right, so what we need to do, <clears throat> okay, is get a perfect continuation. Okay, so the end stop 
If we can come in here and see this, you see how it has those dual hash marks right there? Yeah. That allows you to join these rails. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put this on just like this so you we can see it. I'm gonna take that and you see those two little points. I'm gonna put it so you see where that's there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, give me a second. <laughs> oh, sorry about this, everybody. I'm gonna flip it back over because I have to lock it in there. Oh. Got it? Okay, and just, the, I'll put the locking knob on there. It's a variety of things we gotta do, everybody. And you know those rail connectors? We're gonna put those in just like this. This is why I created a little bit of space over here so we can see this. And we're gonna take that, now watch. See those two little points go right in there, just like this? Oh wow. Okay, and that gives me that spacing. See that? Okay. okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have you tighten these two screws right here. Okay. Don't over torque them. So you wanna mar the rail. Say it right. You wanna mar the rail. He doesn't wanna mar the rail. Ma, ma baby. Okay, and I'm gonna do this. We're gonna turn it over and you're gonna tighten those two on the bottom. Let okay. me just do that. Right here. Yep. So he's tightening those two on the bottom. And now the distance from that last hole on this rail to this hole is 32 millimeters. Whoa, flipping sweet. And that's how it's built in there. So there you go, it's a perfect continuation. And let's just check this out really quick. I got a tape here. Do you have a folding rule? Yes. Let's do that. Oh, I like that. Look at that. That is a good apprentice. Let's get that in there for the camera. And you'll see center line to center line is 32. Okay, hopefully I got my center line there. I'm a little off with my center line, but there you go. And that's how you connect the holy, I call these the holy rails. Holy that's rails, That's how baby. you connect the holy rails for a perfect continuation of the 32 millimeter spacing. This end stop right here that I showed you a minute ago, see how it has the, the little hash marks there? Yep. When the LF32 system first came out, the end stop was right here, okay? And some people out, out there may have this end stop and you don't have this. So instead of going out and getting the one, okay, I'm gonna show you how I used to set up for the continuation of these. So the distance from here to here, I wanna make sure it's 32 millimeter. Okay. Okay. Uh, the distance between the rails is eight millimeter. Okay. And I don't wanna lo lose, I wanna use my eyes for it. That's pretty okay. small. But it's all, you kinda of have it already. I'm gonna put this together. Okay, and the space we're gonna create is I have some bits that have what? Some router bits or the LR32 bits. I can just put in here. I just like using two of the 35 millimeter cup hinge ones. Okay, I put them in there like that. It's an eight millimeter space, just like that. I use the shank of the router bit Whoa. as a gauge block and I just tighten it up and now it's spaced exactly at 32. From here to here, 32 millimeter. Now, whether you have the new end stops or the old ones, you're able to put them together. And as we end all our videos, be positive and stay sharp.